Hey there, Sun Food. Uh, Sean the Sun Guy again. Uh, hope everyone's doing well. Uh, I got a little backstory for you today. Uh, my last video as far as pricing. Uh, I guess a lot of people price things differently and one of the big factors was either two or three times what the cost of materials are. And I have a reason, kind of a method to my madness. And it all extends from um, experience or past experiences, I guess. And um, so today I'm going to try to summarize this and kind of keep it simple, but um, it's, a, it's a pretty big fail. So hope you all stick with me. I'm going to go through and get this uh, story started. So I think my channel, um, basically what I'm trying to do is share my experiences. Um, always trying to give as much um, advice, good advice, bad advice. You can take it for what it's worth, but overall our experience. We've been in the sign industry, I've been, well, I should say I have been in the sign industry for probably going on 25 years, somewhere in that area. I can't remember exactly when it first started or when you would say I officially started. But, so our company today, um, that it's no surprise, um, iCandy Signs, um, was established as an LLC back in 2010. Um, we started off in West Virginia, we went to Maryland, um, and uh, from Maryland, we pretty much focused on a lot of the online presence um, of the things that we were selling, the Amazon, the Etsy, the eBay, the eCreator, the Bonanza, um, all, all those things. That's pretty much what we focused on. Um, when we had the opportunity to buy the property where we were at, um, we pretty much grew uh, very quickly. And um, so there weren't a lot of shops in our area that did the stuff that we did. And by what we did, we did uh, in-house printing, um, die cutting, wraps, vehicle lettering. Um, and we also did at that point in time um, apparel. So we did t-shirts and hats and you know all that other good stuff. We had a Geonite uh, DK20 that was about two or three years old, um, caught on fire, replaced all the parts in it. That's kind of irrelevant to the story. But the point of this video is that no matter where you are or where you came from as far as in the sign industry, there's always gonna be a point in time that um, I'm just gonna call it a fail. You know, there's a lot of things that uh, we learn from and there's their experiences. And again, that's why I'm kind of putting this out here. I was kind of hesitant. My wife told me just go ahead and do it. Um, so anywho, this is a learning experience um, and why we do the things that we do and to kind of cap off from why I price the way that I price. Again, there was not a lot of places in, the, in our area that that did the things that we can do or we could do or that we were willing to do um one of our customers um was one of the first legal moonshine distilleries in the state of pennsylvania um we kind of struck it off with them you know pretty quick uh husband and wife team family oriented great people um, and they had this idea they went through all the legal avenues and it took a boatload of money and a lot of time um, we did um, signs, uh, banners, uh, you know, retractables, um, trade show graphics, um, you know, labels. Uh, we actually started doing a lot of their labeling for, um, for their products and they had a ton of products. Well, one of the owners came to me and he said, hey, I've got this idea. He said, do you think you can help me out? I said, well, what, what do you got going on? So I don't know if you all remember this or if you watch TV or Discovery Channel. Back in 2017, when Discovery Channel ran a show called Hawk Designs, and in one of those shows, they featured a 2010 four-wheel drive Camaro. I think it was called the Bootlegger. And they actually, there's an episode, so you can pause or go back and look and actually look up. I think it's called the Bootlegger. I'm not exactly sure because I've been out of this for a couple of years. And um, so the owner 
of the distillery actually bought that vehicle um, as part of a promotion for when they sell their product. So they take the vehicle around as a separate entity um, just for um, basically showing off for promotion. It was that, that vehicle was bought as just as a promotional piece to kind of sublease out for other events and everything. But primarily they bought it for um, just for uh, advertising their product just because it was a cool car, it was kick ass, it was pretty badass. Um, so when the owner told me about this, I'm like, hey, that's pretty cool, you know, he said, hey, he said, I need, uh, I need you to make me some shirts. And I said, okay, what's going on? He said, I've got an event going down there. He said, we're gonna advertise our moonshine. He said, we're gonna sell some apparel and some other, you know, doodads and shot glasses and all the other stuff that they sell. I said, okay. And he said, I need about 600 shirts. He said, can you handle it? And I'm like, holy crap, I don't think, I think, our most at that point was maybe about 140, 150 shirts. And anything other than that, um, we just said, no, we couldn't help you. But they spent a lot of money with us. Um, I, I considered one of the owners, you know, almost, you know, friend-like type people. They were very friendly. They were very easy to get along with. Never questioned price, anything like that, whatever it was. We always worked with them and we got the job done. So we go through and we get all that stuff done, ironed out. Um, 600 shirts back in that time um, came out to close to $8,000. They got um, left chest, they got uh, prints on the sleeves, and they got a full back print. Along with the artwork, um, you know, it was a pretty profitable job. At least that's what you think it was. $8,000 is a lot of money. I don't care who, um, you know, in what day and age. Even five years ago, $8,000 was a lot of money. Now, of course, um, with retrospect to people doubling the amount of material costs, um, this is the exact reason why I charge two and a half times the material cost. Um, so when the gentleman came to us with this, with this order, and I'm going to see if I can't zoom in here. And then the total about was down here on the bottom. So it was $7,931.45. That's what his job total was. So we got a 50% deposit. So it was $4,000. We ordered our material, um, $1,500 worth of shirts and $2,500, $2,600 worth of prints. Now, the prints are where the problem came to be. So when we were doing these bulk prints. We were using a company called FM Expressions. Um, we had prior experience with them. We've probably been working with them for, I don't know, maybe a year of ordering their prints with fairly good success. Um, we never did really big quantities and nothing elaborate like these colored pieces here, but um, we felt confident that this was a fairly easy job. Um, it kept one of the employees actually kept two of them pretty busy at that time. And um, so we went full on, ordered everything, got everything in, and um, we got everything done. So we ended up pressing, oh my God, that sucked. Um, you know, silk screening is the way to go when you can do this kind of stuff. And obviously this was not our wheelhouse. Um, and again, I'll go back to say, focus on what your specialties are. If you're gonna make a mistake, don't make it with anything this big. Make it with a $200 order. Don't make it with an $8,000 order. So the shirts were done. The customer came back in, paid the rest of his bill. We were paid, we were good to go. The customer went down to do his promotional um, event. And when he took the shirts out of the boxes, he come to find this. So, and what I'm pointing out is, these breaks, and then down in here as well. And that's before these shirts were even washed. These shirts sat in a box for two weeks. Um, some were worse than others, but for the most part, every single shirt from the two colors that he had, had issues with them. Like I said, some even up here, like I said, some worse than others. And of course, it uh, threw off some alarms, some, you know, some real, real, big red flags. Um, I went back to F and expressions and I told them there's a problem. 
And um, essentially they said, send us some prints, let's see what's going on. I said, okay. So I sent them some prints. I told the owner of the company, said, I'm working on it. Let me figure out what's gonna happen here. Let me see what they're gonna do. Um, because essentially this job was pretty much scrapped. Um, someone was liable somewhere and it wasn't the customer. It was either us as a company or FM Expressions that gave us faulty transfers for whatever reason. So when I reached out to FM Expressions, I'm gonna go through here. So this is my this was my total. $2,399. That was for the transfers. And then this total was $1,472, and that was just for the shirts. So then I go back to FM Expressions and I ask them, there's a problem. What do we do? And they basically come back to me and say, uh, it's essentially a production issue. And after they reviewed everything, they deemed that part of the order they had the same problem with, the same issue with. And so they agreed at that point, this is the initial reach out. They initially said that they would refund me, I, I don't know, it was close to $1,000 just for the prints. And I'm like, well, okay, that's a start. But number one, all the shirts are bad. Number two, $1,000 doesn't touch what we had into this. So that was on September 26th of 2017. Carrying on to the rest of the conversation, um, essentially what happened is F&M Expressions would not budge off of the only thing that they would give me back um, was a little over a thousand dollars because they deemed that the rest of the prints were fine. Um, they couldn't find an, an issue with the rest of the prints. But again, our philosophy was all the shirts are bad. How could you have batches six and seven that were bad on their print? And then the rest of the prints that we had were bad as well. So I believe I went back and forth and I did what I could with F&M Expressions. Um, I took it as far as I could possibly go to the point where I was beyond frustrated and I went to the Better Business Bureau and I filed a formal complaint with them. Apparently I'm not the only one and I'm not the only one that this happened to. So after filing um, a complaint with the Better Business Bureau, you can see it, pause it, read it. Um, I believe their tune kind of changed a little bit and they were willing to refund me the full amount of all the prints for $2,399.60. Again, the problem became I still had shirts, labor, that had to be replaced. And my argument was their prints ruin the shirts. They don't see it that way. So in the, in the fine detail of things, F&M Expressions has a warranty on their site that when you click um, that you agree to the terms, that that's the warranty that you agree to, that they're not liable for any, um, any other shirts, labor, shortages, or anything like that. So this was going nowhere. And in the meantime, essentially what we did is we, we, we refunded the customer basically $8,000. This whole thing about crippled us, it basically put us in bankrupt mode because um, we still had employees. We were still paying the employees, taxes, heating, the whole schmeal of going through all of this. Being even more frustrated that the Better Business Bureau, although that they saw that there was fault, um, they wouldn't go above and beyond um, what they did. And so they deemed this I believe it's still open till this day because I never closed it because we still can't come to an agreement and the Better Business Bureau, they did not want to um, mitigate, is that a word? I don't know, um, between there. So I thought that I would go through the state of Maryland and I was gonna hire an attorney to file suit on F&M Expressions. 
um, I went to a business lawyer. Um, I paid him the $250 consultation fee. And he basically sat down and told me, he said, what do you want to do? And I told him, said, I'm going to sue him, you know, for X amount of dollars and everything. And he said, okay. So the other problem arose. The attorney gave me a, an estimated um, cost to litigate this case. And so once we sat down even further and he said, who do I file the papers to? And I'm like, well, I, I don't know, you know dealing with FM expressions. So the other problem that we ran into is these big companies that have multiple locations, you're never gonna find the one that's truly gonna get sued. So all in all, um, long story short, I'm sure I could probably make this a little bit longer. In total, um, we as a business lost $12,000. Um, we lost $8,000 refunding back to the customer and we ate the cost of the prints and we ate the cost of the shirts, not to mention the labor that we had um, to pay the employees to actually press the shirts. So hindsight being 2020, F&M Expressions is on my crap list. Um, I had a Facebook page and I was bashing them for a long time and I did what I could to try to get more notoriety um, so that people would understand what kind of company that they were dealing with. Um, and again, this comes full circle because this is part of experience. This is part of business. I don't care who you are from big or small, every business is going to deal with something like this. And one thing that I have learned, um, and I still, I take it to heart every day is when I deal with vendors and suppliers, I want to talk one-on-one -on -one with somebody. I don't want to reach out to a company and have a different response from a different person every time. It drives me insane. Um, and a lot of that comes from dealing with this. So my advice to a lot of this stuff is anytime that you sub work out, you think two times is enough. It's not do it two and a half times because at least then you can kind of cover your ass and uh, not lose like we did. Um, it all ended up working out, I guess, in the end, hindsight being 2020, it made us a stronger company and you think about things a little bit differently. And at this point, these were the last t-shirts that we ever did. We sold all of our heat press material, equipment, hat presses, the whole nine yards. We, I had absolutely zero to do with it. And I know I spoke with a lot of you on the phone and I've told a few people about this kind of stuff and they're like, oh dear, you know, it's, it's terrible. It is, it sucks, man, I'm telling you. But again, learn from our losses and our experience. Two and a half times, any time that you sub work out, bare minimum. Um, so, and I also, for some reason, um, I can't let this stuff go. So I'm gonna, so I've got a whole box of stuff. And uh, the guy is still moving on. He still does really, really well. So again, I hope everyone does well. Um, I appreciate everyone uh, tuning in. I appreciate the likes, the comments, the subscribes. Um, you know, go ahead and ding that notification when I put new videos up. It really uh, inspires me to, to do more and share more of our background. Um, and it's not easy. This is not an easy situation or something easy to talk about because I still have some animosity about what happened because it was a lot of money. It was pretty substantial. And if you're ever up browsing on the internet, look up Hawk Designs. Like I said, cool stuff. Like I said, you can see some of their work of what they did and see that there's some, um, there's some truth to the, to the backstory here. But uh, anyways, um, I hope everyone does well. I hope everyone learns a little bit of something from this. Um, keep it small, keep it local when you can support your fellow sign makers. If, if you can, um, get to know your reps, um, get to know the, your suppliers and the people that you're dealing with. And just because it's always the cheapest doesn't mean that it's going to work out in your uh, best interest. Um, and just for future reference, I think that, uh, instead of F and M expressions, I think Bursa Trans was probably one of the other people that were recommended to us to try to get this fixed. Keith opted to go somewhere else. And that was totally fine with us and we totally understood because this was one of those things that we just didn't want to do or deal with anymore. So 
I appreciate all the likes. I appreciate the comments. And for everyone that subscribes, thank you guys. I'm almost to a thousand subscribers. And that's pretty amazing. Um, you know, February 2nd was the first video that I put up and I had no idea where any of this was gonna go. So I'm wishing you all the best in 2022. Learn from my mistakes. I'm here if you all have any questions. I know a ton of you have reached out to me. Email, phone conversations. If you know me, I love to jab my jaws and I will talk about anything. Um, until then, we'll see y'all next year and have a great 2022.